What's up guys, it's Ty aka Tamberlands and I am back with another pregnancy update, so stick around to watch. So first I'll start by saying that this is the 37 week update. So at 37 weeks, the baby is about the size of a canary melon, weighs about six and a half pounds and is about 19 inches long. Um, so again, like I said in the last video, usually at this point in the pregnancy, um, babies don't usually grow too much in length, but they do continue to gain weight until birth. Um, at this point, some babies are ready to go and they're born. <laughs> some babies bake a little longer um, and continue to develop inside of the womb. But essentially, if you do have your baby at this phase, um, the chances of having a very healthy baby is very, very, very high. So that's exciting and that's a good thing as well. Symptoms for me um, have mainly, okay, so the last video I remember, I, I think it was the last video I started talking about lightning crotch and I wasn't really sure if I was having it, but I can promise you like I for sure am having it. <laughs> um, I have been having it very intensely for the past few days. So basically what lightning crotch is, is it's when the baby or the baby's head like kind of presses up against the cervix and it kind of hits a nerve that can send this like lightning shock pain um, down your vagina and your your thigh, your inner thigh area. Um, and it can travel, sometimes it can stay in that one spot, but it just kind of depends on the mom. And it is very uncomfortable. <laughs> now, um, some people may not have it as intensely as others, but I have been having it to where it really, really stops me in my tracks. And um, I have to kind of readjust myself to get myself some quick relief, but it is very uncomfortable. So again, the baby's head is hitting up against the cervix and um, there's a lot of nerves there. So it kind of sends this traveling sensation to whatever area. And yeah, so that's been super fun. Not really, but hopefully, um, typically what ends up happening is that when the baby's head is now like hitting up against the cervix, the body releases hormones and the cervix starts to soften, dilate, and efface. So hopefully that's what's happening over here since I've been having it so much. Um, I would like to think that <laughs> all the pain, it means that I am progressing. I did have an appointment with my midwife last Saturday and she did not check my cervix. Um, she doesn't plan to do that until my next appointment. But I do hope that at this point I have dilated some because I would like for this child to come very soon, okay? <laughs> um, but anyway, so the other symptom that I've been having and struggling with is insomnia and nausea. Uh, so the insomnia is getting very annoying. I usually sleep for a little bit um, at the first part of the night and then I wake up and I'm up for like three or four hours. And it's just like, I can't get back to sleep. <laughs> like I, I try to, um, to listen to my meditation videos that sometimes help me fall asleep, but sometimes that doesn't work. So I just have to wait until my body, um, gets tired enough and is ready to go back to sleep. So that's kind of been annoying. I've dealt with insomnia for a very long time before pregnancy. So it's just something I'm going to have to deal with again. Um, but you know, maybe it's just preparation since I'm going to be up late at night with the baby. Anyway, the other symptom is nausea. So that kind of started last Wednesday and it's very random. So usually it's probably, it's usually closer to nighttime. Sometimes I just start feeling nauseated just out of nowhere. Um, it gives me very bad flashbacks to trimester one, <laughs> but, um, from what I've heard, and what I've been told by my midwife, it is fairly normal leading up to labor because of the surge of hormones that is happening. So hopefully that also indicates that I'm going to be going into labor soon, y'all. Like I'm looking for a miracle in any of these symptoms. Like I, I just need, I need the progress to progress. And then also just the Braxton Hicks. Um, now I haven't really had, I can't, from what I can tell, I haven't really had like a significant increase in the Braxton Hicks as far as like pain or intensity or anything like that. So, um, yeah, they, they come when they come and they go when they go. So yeah, at this point we're just waiting, we're playing the waiting game. Um, 
I am, although I understand that you can't really do anything to induce your pregnancy naturally, um, I am going to start doing maneuvers that will encourage her <laughs> to move down. So um, I have started drinking the raspberry leaf tea, mainly just for the purpose of toning the uterus and preparing the uterus for birth because I have I have read like I said in the last video that it is very very beneficial during the labor and delivery process um again I don't really know the science on how it affects the induction of labor or anything like that but um, I am using it so I don't know I guess I will let y'all know whenever I do go into labor how it impacted me I've been on my birthing ball quite a quite a bit um mainly for like relieving discomfort for me um whenever I have like like before pregnancy when I would have cramps I usually like to get down into a squatting position and that usually relieves the the discomfort for me um and I'm also like a toilet person so like uh cramps when it's like cramps or just discomfort in that region i like to squat or sit on the toilet so um the birthing ball has really been uh, beneficial for that so this today i'm gonna start walking since our weather is back to normal um and yeah hopefully something encourages her to come or she just comes on her own whichever one i just want her to come soon because like i said i'm tired just to update last week we had the crazy snow apocalypse in Texas. It was some very abnormal winter weather. It got down to 12 degrees outside. Um, our power was turned off. We were without power for over a day. It got down to 35 inside of my house, 32 inside of my room specifically. And it was just a struggle. And then after they turned it back on, they kept turning it, turning it off and turning it back on. And it was just, it was really scary <laughs> and um anxiety was really bad and i was just praying that the baby wasn't going to come because we couldn't go anywhere because the roads were iced over and um and then of course like it's way too cold in the house to have a baby so i'm just glad that she stayed put but um the city has well really the entire state of texas we've a lot of us have been struggling for like because we haven't had water um, water is limited there's like a water shortage at every store um luckily my all of my utilities are on but I still know quite a few people who do not have water so um we're we're getting back to some type of norm um which our norm now really isn't normal because of COVID and stuff like that but um there's going to be a lot of time that we need to kind of recover from this because this was just really, really crazy and really random. I'm just glad that baby stayed put and we now have some warm weather outside. I will never complain about 30 degrees again. <laughs> After having 12 degree weather, I the other day I went outside with like a very thin jacket on. It was like 32 degrees. I said, this is fine. <laughs> this is okay. Um, as long as we don't have to deal with that again, y'all. I'm so ready for spring because uh, dealing with winter weather is not my ministry. I'm a fall baby, but fall in Texas is more like summer in other places. So for me, I'm okay with it. I, I'm not a I'm not a cold person. I don't like the cold. So that's what that is. The next video, I should be showing you guys what I have in my room for my baby. And, and then sometime after that, we'll do a nursery tour. As far as labor goes, I will try to um, record up until the point that they get me into the pool because I am doing a water birth. Um, but it just really depends on how I'm feeling. It depends on if my partner is back home. Like it just depends on a lot of things, but I definitely will do a separate vlog where I'm telling you guys about that experience and everything leading up to it and just giving you as much information as I can provide. And, um, then, you know, we'll have the actual birthing video. If I go a couple weeks without posting anything, it's probably because I had the baby and, um, either just 
settling in or trying to edit the video but i will give you guys updates and then again if you follow me on social media you'll get the quickest update with that that's pretty much all i have for y'all today so as usual i will oh i cannot talk i will go ahead and post the link tree link down so that you can follow me on social media and then if you haven't make sure that you like like subscribe and share i have all, i think the, the mercury retrograde is over so i don't know what's going on with my words today but either way <laughs> like subscribe and share and then i will see y'all next time all right